In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can convert a document inside of a document library into a PDF. And we're going to show you how to create this button option here using JSON. And I'll show you a portal that you can get this from, which makes it very, very easy to use. And then also I'll show you how to kind of do some basic adjustments to this. But if we go ahead and convert this document and convert, we'll see that this document gets created. But I'll also show you how you can do this in a way where if you do this again, it will actually replace this file. So I'll show you the basic automation that just creates the file. And then I'll show you the automation that would overwrite the file so you don't have to worry about the flow failing should the user try to duplicate a file that has already been duplicated. Now don't forget, if you like this kind of content, to hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help the channel grow and get this content to other users. The goal right now is to get the channel to monetization. Right now, none of this content is actually bringing any revenue in to actually pay for creating more content. So that is the current goal is to get to a thousand subscribers so that this channel can be monetized and start bringing in a little bit of money to offset some of the costs. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, the first thing we need is a SharePoint document library. And in this case, we have our demo library and then we've added a document in here to do this conversion. So we're gonna convert this document into a PDF file. Now, as part of the process of building this flow, there are a couple things we have to consider. If we're gonna create the file in here, the flow is likely gonna fail if we try to recreate the file and nothing about the file has changed. So that's something to consider is, do you want to create it directly into here or do you want to create it into a template the uh, loading zone and then move it over here when you move files you get the option to overwrite if there's already a file there so that's going to be a little bit different setup depending on what the answer to that question is now if you want to have versions then you have to find a way to add versions and one of the easiest way to do that is you just put the date into the file name then every time that you create that file, it's going to add that date and that will separate things out. Now, if you try to add it multiple times per minute, then you are probably going to have problems unless you specifically format it to include the seconds as part of the process. So just keep all of those things in mind. How you want to handle this is going to change how you're going to build that flow. Now, the next thing we need to do is go up to our integrate option here and then we're going to do a power automate and we're going to create a flow. And I always just kind of bypass all of this and we're just gonna create a flow without having to go through all these pre-automated, pre-set up things. I like to start from scratch with my flows. Now, first thing, let's go ahead and come up with a name for this. So this is gonna be convert word document to PDF. And this would be the document library version. I have done this from SharePoint list where you convert a SharePoint list item into a Word document or into a PDF file. So I've got those videos on my channel. Feel free to check those out. The process is actually very similar between the two. Let's go ahead and add a trigger here. And again, it'll be a SharePoint. And it'll be, instead of for a selected item like a SharePoint list, it's going to be see more here. And it's gonna be for a selected file. So let's find this one here. And let's go ahead and select our SharePoint portal and our demo document library. All right, let's go ahead and add our next item here. And again, it's gonna be SharePoint. Now we get some basic information whenever you do for a selected file, but what we need is all of the information. So let's go ahead and see more here. And what we wanna do is get our file properties. So let's find our get file property option here. And let's go ahead and find our SharePoint site again and our library name. And then for our unique identifier, we'll use dynamic content and find the ID for the file that was selected. Now at this point we have our trigger and our first step, so we can go ahead and save and we're ready to go, but we're not actually ready to go. I just like to save that way if we do have any problems, we've already got something saved in there. Microsoft is getting a little bit better about when you can't save or there's some sort of a sync issue or maybe lost connectivity where it does retain what you were working on but it's always best to kind of save it that way. You don't have to start from scratch if there is some sort of a catastrophic failure. All right, so the next thing we need to do is use our Word option. So let's look for Word and we're gonna see convert Word document to PDF. Now location, go ahead and find our SharePoint portal and then our document library. Let's go ahead and find our document, demo documents. All right, now for the file, select a Word file through File Browse. Let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when we click this. So when we select this, 
this is the format that it's looking for. So let's go ahead and remove this. And let's look at our dynamic content. And we're gonna notice we have the ID. It's not looking for the ID of the file. It's looking for the file name with the extension followed by slash there. So let's look for file name. And we get our file name with extension. That's the primary reason we do the get file properties. This is if we can get this information here. Let's go ahead and add that in there, but we still need that slash. So let's go ahead and add that in there. And there we go. So we need that exact syntax for using this convert Word document to PDF. So if you're running into problems using the ID, it's not looking for that. And a lot of times if you click these options that it gives you, it's gonna show you what it's looking for so you know what kind of a format you're putting into it. But that's a quick way to figure out exactly what it's looking for by looking at what are the options it's trying for. So whenever you get these little hover overs like this, this open folder option, it's looking for a specific path to get to the file name, not the ID. That would be an interesting question to pose to Microsoft is, most things you're looking for the ID. Why would you not look for the ID for this connector? I tend to think it should be the ID, but who knows? That's a Microsoft question. I tend to think that they should convert this over to just looking for the ID of the file because you have that on the trigger and you don't even have to do this step anymore. And it's just a little bit more intuitive. Plus when you use the ID, it doesn't matter what folder it's in. If this was in a folder, we would have to actually put the path to the folder so that it can find that exact file extension. So again, a, a kind of a weird choice by Microsoft to go with the file name instead of the ID. All right, let's go ahead and add our next step here, and it's gonna be the create file option. And again, that's a SharePoint option, but there's not really a lot of other options out there, so it'll be easy to find just using this. Now, this is where you have a choice. You can either put it right in the folder, or you can put it in a different folder and then move the file. So you have to make the consideration on, on what exactly you're trying to do here. But let's go ahead and find our folder path. Now, in this case, we're just gonna put it into our demo folder. And for the file name, let's go ahead and find the name. And again, from get file properties, this will be without the extension. And we need to add PDF on the back of this. Now for our file contents, we're gonna use dynamic content. And we're gonna basically just pull the output from our convert Word document to PDF into this. Now for this particular flow, if we're not moving the file, we're actually done. We can go ahead and save and test this. So let's go back to our SharePoint library and give this a try. Now in our SharePoint library, all we have to do is select this, go up here to our automate options, flows, and go ahead and run this flow. And let's get run flow. And this will take a probably about 30 to 45 seconds for this to run. It's usually pretty quick, but it's still not instantaneous. So there is a little bit of a lag time on this. And there we go. Now we have our file. It's got the exact same name as this, just with PDF on there. If we go ahead and open this up and we can see that it converted it to PDF without any problems. Now that's it. That's as simple as it needs to be. Now, if we were running this flow again, we would get an error it would not actually execute and overwrite this. Again, it's as simple as you would move it into a temp folder and then you would use an action to move the file from the temp folder to here. That gives you the ability to overwrite something. Now let's go ahead and demonstrate this. So instead of putting it into our demo folder here, let's go ahead and put it into our template folder. So we have a template processing folder here. And let's go ahead and add another step here. And now what we wanna do is move file and then we would go to our portal again and for this one we use dynamic content and we would use our body id here and then we would go ahead and find our destination site and then we would use our destination folder of demo and then what do we want to have happen if it's already there? And in this case, we could choose to replace it or just move it with a new name. If we always want to use a new name, for example, maybe it's the date, for example, could be changed on it, or you could just say fail. Let's go ahead and replace. And let's go ahead and save. And let's go ahead back to our SharePoint portal and give this a try. Let's go ahead and refresh so it doesn't say a few seconds ago. And now we've got about three minutes ago. So let's go ahead and select our file here. And now we're going to go ahead and run our flow.
And now what we should see is this file gets overwritten and then this will say a few seconds ago. And there we go, it refreshed and now it is a few seconds ago. So it overwrote that file. Now, what about if we wanna have the ability to trigger this from a button? We, want, we don't wanna have a whole bunch of people that we have to train how to go up here and go to automate. And it's kind of a, a lengthier process. We wanna make it as efficient as possible to do this process. How would we make this a little bit easier for them? So what we could do is we could add a button right in here that would be able to trigger this flow. So let's go ahead and add a column. Now we wanna just do a text column. So we'll hit next. And we'll go ahead and just say convert PDF and hit save. Now, I always do that. I never leave any spaces in there because spaces are handled kind of strange with Power Apps. So it's better to remove those. But we're gonna go ahead and change the name of this right away so that it's nice and clean. We wanna to convert to PDF. That'll be our, our button here. And now what we need is the JSON formatting. This is a little bit of code, but again, trust me, it's very simple. I'm gonna show you where you can get the code and how you can modify this to work for your situation. So where do we get this code from? Now, here is the PMP portal. And if we look at the main landing page, this is what it is. It's Microsoft 365 Power Platform Community Portal. So again, a lot of great resources on this portal. I'm gonna put the links for both of these. So this main portal here, I'll put that in the description of this video, but I'm also just gonna give you the direct link to the JSON that we're gonna use for this process as well. Now this is the JSON that we need. So all we have to do is copy this and we go back to our SharePoint portal and we're just gonna use this inside of the formatting for that column that we created. So we come back here and what we're gonna do is select this column and we're gonna go to column settings and we're going to format this column and then what we're going to do is go to advanced mode and we're going to paste our json in here let's go ahead and do that now let's go ahead and preview this right away and there we go now we have a button that the user can click now i've got another video i'll put the link in the description here i talk a lot more about how you can modify this and you can actually see the the coding that i use that would change this and it would center it and it would do some different formatting options and walk you through everything. For this one, all we're gonna do is make it work the way that it was right here. I'm not gonna do a lot of changes to it, but all I'm gonna do is update the ID. So we need the ID from our flow. That way when we click this button, it knows what flow to run associated with this button. Now you can have multiple buttons and multiple flows. All you have to do is change the flow and then you could also change the text of, you know, do it and some of the other things that are in here. All that stuff is configurable very easily through this, but all we need now is our flow ID. All right, so in our URL for building this, we have the environment ID right here, and then we have the flow ID right here. So we're gonna copy the flow ID right here. We're gonna copy that information and then go back to our document library and put that in. All right, so in our formatting of the JSON, let's go ahead and paste this in here. And then we'll just go ahead and save. Now we could change the hover over. So right now it says execute a flow. So we could come down here and find where it says execute a flow. And we could change this to convert to PDF. And we'll hit save here. And we'll see that this is gonna say convert to PDF. Let's go ahead and click the button and see what else we could change as part of this process. So let's go ahead and click convert to PDF. And then we're gonna see it's flow time, so we could change that. So that's where that information comes. And this is where do it is. So let's go back here and where it says it's flow time, this is the top. And we'll just say convert document. And then this could be execute it or convert and we'll hit save. Go ahead and click the button again and we'll see what happens. And we can hit the convert now. And again, we change convert document and we change convert. Let's go ahead and test this and make sure that it runs our flow. So now what we should see is instead of about a minute ago, this should switch over to a few seconds ago. Again, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for this to actually run, and there we go. So now we've got a button inside of our document library here that we can click to convert this. Now, some things to consider is maybe you wanna keep your PDFs in a different area. If I try to convert a PDF, it's already a PDF, it's not gonna work. But you could also change this so that the button isn't visible when it's a PDF document. That's always a possibility here as well. So you've got some different things you could do to control this. But again, that's kind of user preference and how you're actually setting things up depends on, on what you're trying to do. If you're interested in me covering how you could do some different things here, let me know in the comments on how you're trying to adjust it. 
and I can cover that in a future video. Now again, if you like this kind of content, don't forget to hit that subscribe and the like button. It helps the channel grow and get the content out to others. Right now, this channel is not even monetized, so there's actually no money coming from these videos right now. So my goal right now is to get to that 1,000 subscriber count. So at least this channel is starting to make a little bit of money and offsetting some of the costs of doing these videos. All right, that's it for today. Hope you find the content helpful. Until next time.